Okay, thank you. Mrs. Mayor is not able to be here tonight. Christina, if you would do the roll call, please. Absolutely. Tom Cruise? Here. Jeff Young? Here. Cheryl Hancock? Here. Anita Jagosinski? Here. Kate Mayer is excused. Lisa Collins? Here. Tim Mettinger? Here. And Gary Dunlap? Here. Okay, with six of the seven school board members present, I would declare a quorum. Board norms in your blue folder are a copy of the board norms if you'd take a minute to look at those as we prepare for the meeting this evening. Approval of the agenda, I would note that the agenda has been posted, distributed, and sent to the local media. With this in mind, are there any changes? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda as published. So motion. Motion's been made and seconded, Gary? Yep. Okay. Uh, motion has been made and seconded to approve the agenda as published. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Public participation. Is there anyone who wishes to address the board relative to any item this, at this time? We ask that a five minute time period per person be followed. Please come forward, state your name, address, and topic to be addressed. Hello, my name is Sue Swackhammer. I live at 417 North Main Street in Holman. Um, I'm here both as a, well, uh, an employee seeking to retire soon. Not that soon, but soon <laughs> enough. Um, there are two items on the agenda. Well, I, that's one item on the reports and discussion talking about post-employment benefits. Um, my understanding is that at the um, handbook meeting, they're looking at changing the date of retirement from March 30th to January 30th for the upcoming school year. Um, making a decision to retire is a, a long and hard decision for people to make. I feel that um, there's a, it, being that it's such a short amount of time that not even a full semester of school would be in, things could change. Um, people have a lot of things they need to look at as they look into retirement. My understanding is the district wants to get a, a heads up on positions that are very competitive out there and um, want to be able to um, look at uh, potential hirees for those positions. My thought is why not have uh, postings that there may be p potential issues and maintain the March 30th date that has been the tradition in the Holman School District. Um, then by the time you would have the people who would be retiring, you'd also have a list of people that you could look at for those positions. I do know that the job market is very competitive. And um, the one thing about retirement, though, it's a decision of ending a big portion of your life to begin, a begin, to begin hopefully, another big portion of your life. And I feel that um, the more time we have to make that decision as retirees, that um, it would be important to consider. The other thing, also part of post-employment and benefits, my understanding, um, people uh, in the teaching, uh, at least in the teacher, get paid for unused sick days in a certain percentage that, um, like a formula that is put into our benefit package. Um, it's a one lump sum payment to be paid in the January after you, the year you retire. And my understanding is the recommendation is to put it all into an HRA, which probably is good financially because you can do tax-wise and somewhat of protection. Um, but I feel those people who have given many years to the district and um, purposely saved up those days in case something were to happen or looking five years um, down the line and want a significant number of days so I can have that lump sum that um, not only that I, I as a retiree would look at that as a choice, but also maybe it could put some into an HRA or my own I, um, IRA and then have a dream vacation that I've been um, waiting to take because I have not used any of the time during the school year to do any of those things. Um, this is considered a benefit and I feel a very well deserved benefit for those people who want to be in the classroom and save the district many days of some paid. 
Maybe you can consider if a person has more than 150 days, people could have a choice as to where those, that money would go, either all of it or part of it or something like that. I know uh, some may already have spouse's insurance or covered on a, another plan. Maybe some are already on Medicare and already have that figured out. And we're considering that to be something else um, as a lump sum for their own personal use. So those are two things I know are under discussion in post-employment benefits, but um, as you look at down the road, I know many of us are thinking of in the line of retirement, but those are two important issues as you go in, into the new life, as I call it. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. Is there anyone else who would like to address the board at this time relative to any item? Okay, Nick, I think we're ready for your group. I hope so. <clears throat> All right, so as I get ready, I'll just introduce myself. My name is Nick Slusser. I am a special education teacher. One moment, please. It's a pretty large group. So let's go all the way back so the people in the crowd can see you as well. I'm going to stand here so I can actually pinpoint who is who once we get started. Uh, my name is Nick Slusser. I am a teacher at the high school. I teach Project Live. It's the district's 18 to 21-year-old transition program. This is my fifth year of doing that and my second year coaching these young athletes in the adaptive sports league. Um, I apologize that not all 15 athletes could be here tonight. Some were at work. Some other had uh, family issues that uh, conflicted with this. But we have 12 of our athletes represented today, and we have a volunteer coach and another couple of volunteer coaches here as well. Uh, however, the rest of us are here tonight for two reasons. The first was it was two years ago, almost to the night, where Project Live, seven students had a fundraiser, and they were here, and they presented the school board with a check for $4,100 to start a league. Nobody knew much about it. Nobody knew that we were even going to do it. But they just gave the district $4,100 in the hopes that something like this could be created. So at the time, nothing was started in Alaska, Logan or Central, but all those schools were trying to create something. And not only is it a challenge for a district to start a new sport, but this is a league that consists of indoor soccer, indoor floor hockey, and indoor baseball to accommodate athletes in wheelchairs. Um, and then to add on top of it, not only is it the full league with three different sports, but it consists solely of students with special needs. So unquestionably, and as expected, the school district of Holman, due to its reputation in the world of special needs, approved it without any hesitation. And I want to thank you all for that. Now, with that, since then, it's been two years, we've had six complete seasons of indoor soccer, floor hockey, and indoor baseball. And that includes, not that the competitive nature is the number one reason that we're in this sport, four out of five conference championships <laughs> against the formidable foes from Onalaska, Logan, and Central High Schools. And those six seasons have literally changed the lives of not just 20 athletes, because since day one, it's been 20 different athletes whose lives have been touched by this, but the family and friends of all those athletes that have seen a different side to their student, their child, their athlete, this young adult that is doing things that their parents never thought possible. Um, I highly suggest at some point in time in next year's season to seek out one of the parents of one of the athletes and ask them for a story. Because I can guarantee you some of them could tell you a story that could make a wonderful Hallmark movie because I can't tell you how many times they've come to me and said, I've never seen my, my student do this. I've never seen my child do that. It's nothing that I'm doing. It's just the natural competitiveness, the natural... Uh, abilities that come out during something that happens with a varsity sport. Um, I could take another 15 minutes talking about all the skills that they've learned, but just real quick, um, things that they have learned, learned over the last two years, cooperative learning, all these buzzwords on education, compassion, listening, compromising, communication, leadership, competitiveness, goal setting, focus, overcoming obstacles, commitment, and of course living a healthy and active lifestyle. Uh, before I go on to the second reason why we're here tonight, and don't worry, it's only for a few more moments, I'd like to introduce uh, one of my students in Project Live, Eric Lindsay. He's been with me for two years. He's coming back for a third year, and he's also a second-year athlete in the Dapper Sports League. I'm going to have him speak for just a few moments about some of the things he's learned, but I chose Eric to speak because over two years ago, I sent out letters to all the families in the district with students with special needs coming up to the high school saying, is there any interest of having your son, your, your son or daughter sign up for the league? I had a wonderful handwritten letter come from his family saying, I sincerely apologize, Mr. Slusser, 
but my son, my grandson has a disability. He cannot play high school sports. I'll talk about something that's gonna really motivate you. Okay? <laughs> Eric has been in the league for two years now. He's our starting pitcher on our baseball team, and he has proven not only to his teammates and uh, his, his parents and family, but he's proven to his, uh, himself uh, all the great things that he can accomplish. So before I get to the second thing, Eric has a few things to say real quick. <laughs> okay, uh, my name is Eric Lindsay, and over the past few years, uh, there has been many lessons I have learned. You, uh, based, <laughs> based on uh, my two years in ASL, and uh, some skills that I might have learned would be better socialization with other students, <coughs> team building, and good teamwork, good sportsmanship. Uh, finally, starting to live a healthy physical lifestyle. Since sitting on the couch. <laughs> good way to get out of your comfort zone and uh, meet new friends. Uh, the good leadership uh, opportunities. Uh, learn a good positive sportsmanship and develop self-confidence. One thing I quickly forgot to do, we do have a couple other young women on the team that could not be here tonight, but I'm going to go down the line and just introduce you real quick. We have Cole Herman, Tony Hoffman, <laughs> and they're very proud. <laughs> Ethan Nelson, Alex Troon, Christopher Freeman, Brady Dockendorf. Uh, is Michael Walsh's dream down below there to be a high school coach, and now he gets to uh, fulfill that dream because of the Adaptive Sports League. Um, Taylor Solberg, Anthony Tresick, Stephen Patterson, Eric Lindsay, and Cody Rowe. Okay, so the second reason we're here is once again, due to Holman's reputation around the state about being at the forefront of special education, uh, we want to continue doing that and, and blaze that trail for other schools to develop leagues just like this. Now, we went from 7 to 9 to 11 to 14 to 15. We maxed out at 15 athletes in the Adaptive Sports League. Well, you know what? We have athletes that are waiting in the wings and just <coughs> begging to be able to play because they've seen what's happened to their peers and they want to be a part of that. So in the future, ideally for next year, I would recommend to the board and request to please consider hiring an assistant coach for the Adaptive Sports League. Because not only would it be helpful for the 1 to 15 ratio, but uh, I want that more support so then that next step of maybe creating a junior varsity team. Then once again, being the leader in the area of special education and adaptive um, sports, um, I think that Holman can take on that role and continue to do all the great things that they've done. Uh, to this date. So, athletes, anything else to say before we wrap up here? I think they're still tired from winning the baseball championship Thursday night here at Holman oh, High School. So, great. thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to speak. Thank you, Nick, and thank you to all the people who support him in his efforts. Um, I know that I see faculty in the back that are, I know are assistant coaches and volunteer coaches helping out, and the families who support him as well. Thank you very much for supporting um, this program. I think it's always fun to get to see these kind of things as a board member. So, And yes, so the question was asked about a schedule for your games. Is the season over now that school's coming to an end, or do you have? It is on there. Great. <clears throat> Great. Wonderful. All right. <laughs> Do that too, Nick. Um, but thank you. So I think we still are under public participation. If anyone else would like to address the board, then we will move on to district administrator's report. You have the happenings reports, also the report from our police liaison officer, the monthly report. 
Um, in addition to that, I uh, just want to acknowledge in the past week, a lot has happened, obviously, and with our senior awards banquet uh, last week and following up with graduation, I want to thank the board members that were able to be present on Saturday. Again, another very successful commencement ceremony and uh, went very well. Um, also, just bring to the board's attention and to the community and public's attention the ongoing work at the state level on the budget. And last week, more came out through the um, Joint Finance Committee and specific on the, uh, the Republican motion um, coming out of that. And so just to stay um, informed about that, we will continue to try to get that information and share it. And, but a lot is going on, and, and there's a lot of different pieces. It's not just the funding um, piece only that you may think about. There's a lot of other things, whether it's teacher licensure and, and um, a variety of different uh, parts that are, that are found in the budget as well. And so uh, we will continue to try to get that information out. And this will now start to happen very quickly in the coming weeks where there will be uh, by mid-June, I would predict, if not even earlier than that, a final approval. So with that, happy to take questions, um, if there are any. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, seeing none, then we'll move on to reports and discussion. Health curriculum presentation. I think uh, Carrie DeLong and maybe oh. Karen Coleman, I think, is coming to the I'm just microphone. running the machine. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks, Karen. <laughs> All right, I'm Carrie DeLong. I'm a health education um, teacher at the middle school and the health chair. And here is our health committee that worked on this health curriculum. And if you know, it's towards the bottom. Um, there are f a few 4K educators that we brought in to, so that we could look at 4K through 12 at health education. Um, here are our eight health standards, starting with core concepts, <coughs> analyzing influences, accessing information, interpersonal communication skills, decision making, goal setting, self management, and advocacy. This is our scope and sequence that we've created for the elementary level. And if you look on the left hand side, you will see all the topics that we will cover in the elementary level and for health education and the grade levels across the top. Um, the actual topics being taught specifically at that grade level are in the boxes and the numbers stand for the standards that we're hitting. And if you notice like down 4K, a lot of the concepts that we're teaching at that time, we can't go into like an advocate, advocacy at a 4K level. So many of the 4K and kindergarten level are just introducing a lot of these topics. Um, and then hopefully we developed into more broad topics and standards so that we could hit all eight standards throughout the elementary level. This is our sixth through 12th grade um, scope. And what we've done is picked out some topics and tried to hit as many standards as we could accomplish between our required health <coughs> in the district. So we have standards one, three, four, and five being covered at the sixth grade level. Um, in seventh and eighth grade, the two, six, seven, and eighth are also hit, um, along with core concepts <coughs> again, but um, they aren't required classes, so only a certain amount of kids are getting those. Uh, at a ninth grade level, we have been able to hit a bigger amount of standards there. Um, and then if kids choose to take advanced health, that's an option as well. So for our strategic objectives, the bolded items up on top are the items that we have started to work on. Um, obviously incorporating the Common Core state standards, aligning the curriculum um, to meet the state statutes, um, and writing this curriculum, that's, that's what we tried to do. Um, meeting, we had a meeting about adding a seventh grade required health class to try to hit more of those standards and more of those students at that level. Um, Mr. Volger is willing to look at that if it fits the needs and fits the schedule. We just, we haven't gotten to that point yet. 
So um, those are some of the things that we have accomplished. <clears throat> forming a human growth and development advisory committee. This committee has been formed. Uh, we have met one time so far, and this is just people from the community, um, help me out, healthcare, clergy, administrators, teachers, parents from all levels getting together, and students, sorry, students reps, um, looking, at, um, looking at all of what's being taught and what are the needs for our students in the Holman School District. Um, providing sustainable technology and ever ch for our ever-changing health content, we have um, accessed Dr. Reichel from UW to help us to form our curriculum writing and to help with the writing process itself. We have not gone into strategic objective four at this point. <clears throat> And our next steps are to implement this curriculum in the 2015-16 school year. Some of the resources and common assessment ideas for elementary is some of the next steps that we want to, um, to take to them with elementary teachers not being licensed health teachers. It's sometimes overwhelming for them to take and teach this curriculum. So we want to provide them with as much information and common assessment ideas so that they're ready to teach that and they have the same common language as we we have um, staff development for technology and tools and teaching resources for all of them then. so that is it so any questions another question yeah Cover like internet safety anywhere in that for students, you know, with like self self safety, but internet safety. Yeah. So internet safely. Yeah. There is some in again in a seventh grade health class. We talk about it a little bit. Um, not a required class. Um, we do I think have that in the elementary curriculum as well. It was I want to say fourth or fifth grade. I'd have to look at the scope again. Sorry. I mean, like that's becoming an issue with students just how to you know make good decisions about w interacting with people meeting people Definitely. giving information and even just kind of like the <coughs> reputation you know future jobs and right future employers and not you know thinking about that Definitely. yeah we tried to look at also what guidance teaches and tried to okay as well-rounded as we could and not have we want to have double hits but not um, with the amount of time that they have to teach especially at the elementary level mm -hmm. we know that the time is limited as well so yeah any other questions okay thank you then the next item is physical education self-study Patty Abraham here. Good evening. <clears throat> First of all, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to um, present the self-study findings that we have come across this year. Also, it's very nice to see our new superintendent in the audience. Um, and I also would like to thank all of my peers, K-12, for coming out on a rainy night. So um, our task was to do a self-study. We have redesigned our vision statement. Um, all of this information you can also find in your board packet that you received. So this is our new um, vision statement for physical education, K-12. This self-study also includes physical education, not only K-12, but adaptive physical education, K-12 as well. Um, we have also um, realigned our mission statement for the physically literate individual that will align with the national standards. So what you see on your screens are the national standards that we um, will be adapting. 
Our data so sources, we had to have three of them. The first ones we did were with student surveys, parent surveys, administrative surveys, and also PE, physical education surveys. And you can see the number of people that responded. Um, as far as students, we surveyed elementary, four or five students, mm -hmm. all of middle school, six through eight, and then nine through 12 for the high school. Our second source of data was from our student focus groups. They were facilitated by external evaluators. The elementary was done um, with fourth and fifth grade students being represented from all four elementaries, both um, across gender lines. Dr. Christy Malley from UWL facilitated that one. At the middle school, Dr. Ray Martinez from Winona State University facilitated that. Um, the information then from both the middle school and the high school, what the, the focus groups were videotaped, and then Joe Bailey, who is a secondary uh, teacher of the year and nationally board certified teacher, also then reviewed the findings for both middle school and high school for the focus groups. Um, what some people might have thought, which was physical education in the past, has changed. So the pictures represent 21st century physical education and where we're moving towards. Notice it's just not um, geared for seem, steam, excuse me, team sports. It is for individual lifelong activities, including all students. We had some key findings <clears throat> at the high school. As you can read on the, your screen, we talked about scheduling as far as choices for the students. Um, at the high school level, they pick their course offerings, and then if it fits into their schedule and there aren't too many students taking the same courses, they do receive their first choices for courses. Students also indicated through the surveys that they would like to improve their muscle strength because it was important. The parents in the surveys thought that it was an important component to have for their child at the high school level. And it was very evident that the PBIS model was evident in their program. Middle school, the students emphasized that they wanted to be more active than just in their class. Um, some of them would also like to see their class extended for a longer period of time. They also thought that muscle strength and flexibility were two, imp two important areas that they should improve in. Um, they also recognized that it's just not important to be active inside of class, but also outside of class. And again, um, the PBIS model was evident in their program. Key findings for elementary, students wanted to be physically active as adults. Um, assessment is not understood by all students. Um, this is an, oh, um, not my updated version, so um, we'll go with that. Um, actually, it, the assessment is understood, but not by all students. Um, students with special needs um, mm -hmm. do receive assistance, and parents also valued physical education at the elementary level. Our overall strength then in the program um, for staffing, all of the physical education teachers are qualified licensed teachers. The staff do participate in ongoing professional development, both state, um, local, and at the national level. S teachers do utilize um, student health information to address individual needs through the curriculum. Um, APE students receive modified activities in the appropriate least restrictive environment. We also provide a systematic development in the psychomotor, cognitive, affective, social, and emotional domains. The students feel that they learn new skills, K-12. Units and lessons produce students giving their best effort. A foundation has been created um, for physically active adults. And also we continue to utilize the curriculum as a, a working document. Um, changing all of the time to meet our needs. Our class environment, we provide a safe and positive environment for the students. Um, we are using 21st century technology for all students. Underneath communication, we use a variety of different communication tools for administrators, 
parents and colleagues. The areas we found that need most improvement would be for the staff to provide K-12 staff common PLC time outside of the early release for each second Wednesday of the month to support and integrate common core and physical education. Uh, facilities and class sizes to limit the class sizes to 30 students. Um, this is found more in the upper levels for the class sizes to, pr to give them a safe environment with sufficient equipment. To minimize physical education classes from being displaced throughout the year um, at all levels for one reason or another they seem to be displaced and it seems to come in the fall and the spring um, and many times with the weather that we have been having it's very difficult to take a class outside um, when they are displaced it, we would like to see an increase in budget to provide both the unit and course specific equipment purchases for the implementation of new and um, developed courses both at well actually k-12 for that mostly apparent though at the high school we would like to see to create a separate district budget for replacement and the management on the fitness and the adventure equipment we received that equipment through a pep grant a number of years ago and it is used extensively and with that use comes the breakdown of equipment um, that it at sometimes can be very costly to repair to create a timeline for the district maintenance to repair and replace a middle school track um, uh, let's see what I have done is I had asked both the middle school and the high school to just allow a short presentation so you can see our needs that we have that's the middle school the track with the large crevices that you see in the blacktop um, which does not provide a smooth surface for running um, and could provide or could give accidents uh, opening door there by putting their foot in it uh, let me see let's see if it's up here yep it's right here oh. click the back button there we go all right um, when I presented before I didn't I had a different <laughs> method here it came right up um, also the current number of high school f um, students that are utilizing the locker room and the fitness rooms it's been outgrown the uh, facilities both in space and air quality um, there's also a lack of storage Our locker room is way overused. We have lots of fire classes throughout the day and almost all PE lockers are used. In addition, we don't have enough lockers for all the athletes we have, and this is the result. Also, weightlifters want lockers and we just don't have any to give to them. This is our athletic storage room. Um, many people think it's a fire storage room. It's jam-packed. We re really have no place to put anything in here. And actually, it's way overused by sports and PE. Our fired storage is lacking so much that we have things left in the gymnasium that we just have no place to put. Um, there's a, a room here designated for storage, and you'll see how full it is. We don't even have a working light in there um, due to some drainage from the roof. So there is no place to put anything in this room. Lack of storage causes us to use the um, official's locker room often, and you know this is not a good storage system, but it's what we have available. This is the adapted PE storage closet. They have a decent amount of equipment and no place to put it. I think this programming is important for our kids to have specialized equipment, but our place to store it is really lacking.
just to show you, this is our PE storage area. We're blessed with a lot of equipment, which has been fantastic. However, getting equipment in and out of here at times with uh, five classes at one time is very challenging. Keeping it nice and neat is also a challenge. More space would be awesome. Often when we get displaced, we're told that we can use the LGI. This is the LGI on a day-to-day -day basis due to lack of storage. Some people might say, well, why don't we put these things in storage closets? Because this is what all of the high school storage closets look like. <coughs> <laughs> all right so um thank you for watching those videos they whoops they tell a better story than words also just one short one to also then emphasize that there needs improvement in the boys locker room at the middle school both with the lockers and the shower facilities There is no audio to this, so your eyes can just prove the screen. As you can see, it's also outdated as the high school. Lockers that um, don't lock anymore, they don't, the latches don't latch. and they're very tight. Um, also a lack of benches. And what you couldn't see would be the air quality is also a concern in both facilities. Getting back then to areas of improvement, communication, to collect feedback from parents and students on both the unit and course offerings, for technology to increase, increase technology availability at the high school and the elementary levels to be able to integrate best practices. Our recommendations for improvement using strategic objective number one. This would be an ongoing to realign, redesign, and to structure the K-12 curriculum to the shape, which is the Society of Health and Physical Education educators. Also then to look at their standards and their grade levels, grade level outcomes. For ups, the objective number two for communication, to increase the frequency to communicate with parents and guardians to provide information on units, course offerings, assessment, and their progress of their student. Object, objective number three, the sustainability for the elementary budgets to be equal per student across the district. Right now, um, they reflect different amounts. And also within that budget, um, not only are equipment concerns in there, but there are some buildings that they also include paper usage and laminating. Middle school would like to see an increase in budget per middle school student as well. We need to have a district budget to cover the inspection, the replacement of adventure equipment, and um, all of the equipment in the fitness rooms. The budget for those, um, the individual buildings cannot sustain, um, and then also provide equipment for the students. We'd also like to see the, the district IT budget to provide the K-12 staff technology equipment to meet our needs. Um, we feel that we are a teacher just like a classroom teacher and their equipment is covered underneath the IT budget and it doesn't come out of their classroom budget. Objective number four, we would like to see provided K-12 physical education staff both regular and adaptive physical education teachers financial support to attend state and national workshops to include um, the workshops to cover current best practices common core and educator effectiveness 
um, across our district K-12, there are some buildings that um, there's been a collaboration with both um, Wendy's budget and the building budgets. Um, we would like to see more of that. Um, actually, next year, the National Physical Education National Convention will be held in Minneapolis, and it would be a shame if we could not send a, a vast amount of teachers up to that. Um, the National Convention travels around the state. The last time we were able to attend was when the PEP grant funded that. And the last year, of uh, the third year of the PEP grant, um, we actually got locked out. Um, we couldn't make it down to the convention because we were stuck in the Chicago airport. So um, I would like to see um, a collaboration or uh, a way that we can um, provide more of the K-12 staff to attend that, especially next year when it is so close. And that is all of my presentation. If you have any questions, either for myself or from any of the specific building levels, I'll entertain those questions now. Questions? So, Patty, if you went back and you already turned it off, but one of your slides talked about an area for increase, and I just wanted to um, review this. I think we do when we have the self-evaluations come from all across the curriculum. But it was the one related to budgeting. And as a, and Wendy may be the one to answer this too, as a uh, subject comes before us for self-evaluation and then curriculum rewriting, I think isn't it through Wendy's budget that new curriculum implementation is done through her budgetary means so that if you are writing new curriculum, new initiatives, that's where the money would come from. It wouldn't necessarily sustain at that high level because as you implement, you need new equipment and you need new, you know, mm -hmm. used to be workbooks or whatever, but the IT kind of things, those would come. And I'm suspecting Wendy shaking her head, yes, that those new initiatives would be funded through your budget. <clears throat> So each year through our curriculum cycle, we have different folks cir circulating through. So each year when they are up to their resource allocation year, they do receive a one-time allocation. I believe, you know, and this is a concern with a lot of folks that ongoing support you know, just isn't within my budget to continue. I wish it was. <clears throat> But to implement it, those additional dollars needed to implement are part of the budget, and then yes. the regular budget would just help to sustain those things. That is correct. So if we're seeing it here, then that would be something, because PE is, I think health is one step ahead of PE, so mm -hmm. PE will go into that next phase, And but the, the health, what they're implementing this coming year, that will be supported by your budget. Right, so out of next year's budget, the health department will receive their one-time allocation for resources. And then the next year, PE will. And, and then I know you mentioned um, facilities, and it, we've heard is, um, oh, I can't think of what you called it now, but the, um, uh, it's the, I can't think of the word, um, PE, the, um, for special needs students. Adaptive. Oh, adaptive, adaptive physical thank education. Thank you. Is that that one of the facility needs I've heard at the high schools? That's actually held in the cafeteria. Is that that is correct? That is correct. And so, is that something we're working to address through scheduling, or is there no way to address it other than building? Or um, I'm Jerry Sure, come on. At the high school. Um, during any given class period throughout the year we have we have three gyms at the high school so three classrooms and sometimes we have four or five PE classes going on out during one period so including what would be the adapted <coughs> class so right now we just don't have the classrooms to accommodate for everything so yep on most days where we're inside I'm in the 
cafeteria. I know that was a discussion when we were talking about the community center that there was a gym that was going, that's being built as part of that, that, okay. And then I know the storage, that's, you know, pretty, the locker rooms and the storage, I think the only way you can solve that is through building. And I know that as the study um, through buildings and grounds, they've identified the, um, the maximum amount of students that we can have the capacity in buildings and that changed a little bit, um, increased a little bit even at the high school, but I know they did identify some of those core areas as needing to be addressed. So that um. might be something that we do need to address since this came up as part of our curriculum mm -hmm. study. I think, you know, the buildings and grounds, that might be something they can start to look at next year um, as that committee comes forward and starts to meet because we want to you know the PEP grant I know it was like nine hundred thousand dollars or something like that Patty and it was substantial yes yeah and when you buy those things just as we build our buildings we always say we want to maintain and take care of them as you buy those that equipment we want to maintain and take care of them and anytime you have that kind of tight storage things get pushed and shoved and moved and sometimes things don't always aren't as well maintained so thank you for sharing that though I think it's good to see those kind of things and Maybe that would be something you could share with that Buildings and Grounds Committee when they meet this fall. But okay, because especially where they have a makeshift light in the storage yes. because of the drainage <laughs> off, that's a safety issue yeah. um, that should be addressed as quickly as possible yep. for that. And the one-time allotment, um, we only get that in a, anywhere between a seven and nine year roll over with the curriculum. So sometimes there are new um, courses that we would like to offer and we can't because we have to wait. Um, and So is a self-study done or a curriculum review done every seven to nine years or is it? Yes. Oh, I thought it was more often. Well, the core groups might be a little, no, the same. Yeah, it used to be a lot sooner, but as the budgets have shrunk, things have been expanded out. So are there any other questions? Yeah. I think Tom has yeah. one. I was just curious. Um, I mean, the physical education is really important. And get out moving and mm -hmm. you know, revitalize yourself. And I'm wondering, is there, in the complex scenario that you deal with, is there any way that some students who go to sports, who are in sports teams, they don't have to take PE, so that you'd free up some space? Is that not doable? Um, there has, been a, there yeah. has been a movement in the state of Wisconsin um, to provide that as an option. Okay. Um, my personal feeling, and I would imagine a number of my colleagues would be, feel the same, that it is not the same. If you're out for a sport, say just basketball, you're only active for that period of time. Um, and we're looking to, to give you new skills to provide a lifetime of activity. So um, I would not support that initiative. Any others? Thank you very much, and we'll see you, I think, next year when you come with your... You will. Thank you. Thank you. So then moving on to food vendor bid results <coughs> and bakery. Looks like Mr. Clark is coming. It was nice to see a great turnout from PE folks. Thanks for coming. Yeah. <coughs> That's your cue we can move. <laughs> <laughs> So you have the issue paper. The issue paper addresses the 2015-16 bakery products bid. This was actually not up for um, bid again. However, the price increases that were suggested warranted going out and testing the market. Um, we joined 14 other area school districts uh, to conduct a bid for approximately a quarter million dollars worth of bakery products. Uh, Holman's was $40,000 of that. $250,000 amount. Uh, this type of intergovernmental uh, cooperation in bidding is uh, not something new for food service, but something going on for a number of years. Uh, the bid is 4-15-16 school year with the option to renew for three additional years. So if prices remain competitive during that time, this would not come back to the board actually for four years because it'd be renewed annually. Um, so the possible motion references 2015-16 school year. I want you to know that if you approve this, administration would have the, um, ask for the privilege of just renewing this for the additional three years as uh, price is allowed. Are there any questions? For the bakery stuff? 
bakery products. That gonna. Uh, it, I, I know what's the national thing with uh, Michelle Obama. Is that gonna be any problem there with the bakery goods, or is that? No, actually, our food service program uh, addressed the issues such as high grain products uh, within food well before Mrs. Obama was um, okay. leading that charge. Um, so this should not be a problem. Those nutrition standards we've had for some time are a part of what's included here. So we're still going to get cookies at the special meetings, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> See what we can do with that. Nope. You're leading by example, remember. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, thank you, Mr. Clark. Then field experience contracts with Winona State. Dr. We bring, Carlson. Thank you. We bring these to the board's attention. Uh, not all at the same time, but you have Winona State's um, in front of you. And again, this would be on June 8th for approval, but just an ongoing agreement with it with Winona State. We also have agreements um, with uh, Viterbo and and UWL and I believe even Luther at times and so on. So those will continue to be brought as they come in as well. So questions? Any questions? Okay, seeing none, then um, play handbook language revisions, Melissa. Okay. All right, so we have two items that we're bringing forward tonight. Um, the first one is evaluations. This falls under part one, so something that applies to all employees. Mm -hmm. Um, the strikeout that you'll see in there is the only change um, really just deleting the notification requirement because of educator effectiveness um, that really defines how we evaluate and when we evaluate our teachers and our other assessment manuals define that for the hourly staff so um, not really a need to have that language in the handbook any longer any questions on that and that went before I know it was yes. personal and governance. I suspect it was the ERT mm -hmm. as yep. well. So we went to ERT, personal and governance, and now to the board. So. Okay. Um, the second item that um, we'll go over tonight, um, <coughs> this is one that um, Mrs. Swackhammer did bring up in her public participation. Um, this is in regards to retirement benefits for our teachers. Um, looking at changing the notification <coughs> date from March 31st to January 31st. Um, and as you'll see in the rationale um, for this change, we have many changes that we experience as a district in our enrollment. Um, we have lots of fluctuations in our enrollment. So as we prepare for our staffing on an annual basis, um, making this type of change would help us to um, not have to place employees in um, that state of not knowing where they're going to be the following year, um, helping us to make better and sooner decisions on those staffing needs. Um, versus waiting till that March 31st deadline. So um, making this change would really help us greatly in that staffing need. So, Does is is it save any money? Or is that not really? Yeah. Okay. And I would have to say <laughs> feedback uh, along the way too as we've gone through the different stages. Uh, <coughs> similar to what uh, Sue had mentioned too, just that question of what impact this might have on on people looking at retiring and it is a big decision and, but it's it's balancing that and, and the long-time interest and in what we need to do to really work ahead so so certainly those ideas or those thoughts concerns have been shared yeah. along the way as and well so it gives you more time to make decisions you're saying right correct okay. and one thing that's not in that rationale but would be necessary obviously is um, sooner communication with staff so perhaps Right when staff come back in September, a notification would go out as a reminder of the change. And then again, maybe right after Christmas break of that upcoming notification requirement. So um, we, especially this, we do the notice now, it would just happen um, sooner to staff. Especially this first time, if, if the board were to approve this, uh, we, would, we also discussed actually a special letter going out mailing yet um, at early summer uh, to those who would fall under that eligibility um, category for this coming <coughs> year. So, and whether uh, if that would be an annual uh, practice, I don't know, but at least if, if this change were to be made, again, that at least the first time through, making sure that notice is done early summer so that staff have the opportunity even this summer to really start through that process if they have not already. And I think. It 
that was the feedback you received from the ERT, wasn't it? That um, communication was going to be the key, just to communicate that date. Yep. Uh, again, questions about how this would impact uh, the retirees and uh, their decision-making process, and then that went to it means that we'd really have to work on the communication piece, and that doesn't, you know, what Sue had mentioned that does the two-month difference. That that still uh, that doesn't fix that, but again, it's still uh, making sure that people are aware early on. <coughs> Any questions? So this went to the ERT? Mm -hmm. Yes. Were they, they were supportive of the change? I, I yeah. would defer, I was absent that evening, sorry. <laughs> with, with, again, with the comments too, they were acknowledging that this was, this was new <coughs> to the concept. And so, so Ms. Jenkins is with the comments about, you know, what, what would this mean that the, the uh, having less than the two months, uh, less time, and it would cost people to make a shift in that decision making and then it went into that conversation about communication yeah and so um i guess this is all to my husband just retired at the end of march so this is all right in my alley right now and i in fact i talked to him about this a little bit before the meeting and um it was a really really difficult decision for him and he's a federal employee so his employment didn't have to end like at the end of a school year like someone here would but um he really couldn't pinpoint the date he wanted to retire and really wasn't sure and his wife didn't want him to retire for a few <laughs> years yet because their kids were still in school but Poor um, wife. <laughs> yeah i have some good dinners now though but um it it really is such a hard decision so when i was reading this and i i saw some of the wording like um you know sometimes i can't i should pull it up and read it but um that employees can know months and sometimes years in advance when they're going to retire. I don't think that part is true because, you know, unless you, unless you're really, really organized, you don't know years in advance the date that you're going to retire. But I really, I, this really hit home with me that it was a very difficult decision for him. And I tried to put him into that position. Would he know at the end of January to be able to say, I'm going to quit, I'm going to be done at the end of the school year? And he, he would not. He really, um, he didn't decide on his final retirement date till a month and a half before he retired. So I don't know. I mean, is there a compromise? Can a compromise be reached? Like you would like to move it back two months and the, um, Mrs. Swackhammer talked about keeping it where it is. Could you reach like a happy medium in the middle somewhere so that I know, and I totally see your side. I know it would make things a lot easier to advertise jobs or not have to um, give people notice if you know that there's going to be an opening. But on the other hand, there are people that it affects that may not be ready to say at the end of January, I'm going to retire. I mean, they're fresh off a of Christmas break and raring to go. They might not have all that raring to go by the end of March. Just something to think about. And I, I had a comment too. <coughs> you know, we've been doing it this way for quite some time. It seems like many years we've been doing it this way in March and kind of what has brought upon this change that's really, really significant. Has there been like a huge detriment we to our current process? Or? Over the years to um, look at enrollment at that point in time in the year and start to talk about do we need to have conversations with employees that they may not a, either be here next year or not even be in this building. Uh, maybe have to move to a different grade level or a different building and these types of notifications at an earlier point would avoid all of those conversations, potentially. Part of it is, is uh, can we just improve what we've been doing? And um, our staffing process, uh, high school, and you know, Mr. Bear's out there, and that really is we're in the starting that up in February as far as students selecting, and and so so much is really involved in this whole process and so this is just one of those those ideas of looking long term how this could perhaps really improve overall and but but with it would mean a obviously a transition a change and whether now now is the time and I guess balancing that with um, there's there's obviously I'm convinced we're convinced that there are positives for moving it forward otherwise we would not have advanced it like this 
but at the same time balancing that with with the other interests that have been noticed and mentioned as well. Do we know what area districts, other area mm -hmm. districts have as their notification time? Not looked into that, no. And what is our deadline to notify people for layoff or? Um, we <laughs> require um, letter of intent to be sent out by May 15th and a response by June 15th. So that layoff deadline is further out there, but. Okay. We'll have to work on the data requests there. <laughs> yeah. Okay, some of that had been adjusted, what, maybe um, two years ago or so, um, you know, associated not only with open enrollment change mm -hmm. and deadline, but also then prompted that delay in that preliminary notice of non -renewal, renewal and also final notice from March date into May date. So um, much of that was realigned along with that change. So I guess looking a little bit for some feedback to help Melissa figure out where to, whether we want to bring this on the agenda for the next meeting um, as it is, or is this something, I know the Personnel and Governance Committee did, did um, up, you know, approve moving it on for approval um, based on the information that we had. Um, I so support moving it forward. I would too. It seems like our staff, <coughs> our people have researched it. And if it's best for the district, and I, I can certainly relate to Anita's experiences too. It, it's not easy for everybody, but I know when, when I've worked in other organizations, we made some structural changes to it, and it was really difficult for the first year or two, but it just kind of, they got used to it. And I think that would be the same here too. It would just be, and if, you know, I think the districts are fighting for employees, and if it, if it gives you a little more time to, you know, get the, let the dust settle, I think it makes sense to me. Kim is shaking yes. I, I would have to, I guess I wanted to comment too. This is, um, this is not meant at all to try to get people to make a decision for them to exit and leave. Um, quite the opposite. We have tried to work with people uh, to actually get them to stay. And so um, I think that that was a comment uh, mentioned to me a little bit about um, the, in no way is this uh, meant to try to encourage people to re retire and leave just by changing this date. Um, but I, I guess I want to acknowledge that because that was one of those comments that was made as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, this is scheduled to be on the next agenda. I think we'll have some continued conversation about that. And okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay, then moving on to the consent agenda items. We have seven items on the consent agenda this evening. Um, if anyone would like to have any of the items considered separately, please share. Is that the government class leaving? Thank you for coming. <laughs> Thank you for coming. You're welcome. Um, but if there's any any items um, that you'd like to have considered separately? Otherwise, I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Is there a second? No second. Okay, motion's been made and seconded to approve the consent agenda items as presented. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Mm -hmm. Motion carries. Board members' reports and discussion. I'll call them board members in the order of the roll call so you can present any committee reports or comments that you might have. Uh, Tom Cruise. First. Wow. First time. Um, not much, really. Just um, enjoyed seeing the um, that group that was here, that the uh, special special needs kids. They were really awesome. I just I love seeing that. I have. I have an uncle and lives in St. Charles, and he participates in a program similar to that. So I have a little bit of background on it, seeing some of those uh, high school events. And it's always really just gratifying to see them come up a level and just enjoy that so much. And I had a nice meeting, our finance committee meet, our finance, but our, um, <coughs> had a meeting with Jay and the bus drivers and listened to them talk about what they do and the product they provide to have the, a good starting experience for every student every morning and I uh, I've mentioned before that I've done inspections for uh, 
employees who are bus drivers for Holman, and uh, it was the same thing. That's the same thing I always hear over and over again as far as uh, they bring value and they take it seriously. So thanks. Thank you, Tom. Um, Jeff. Uh, I have a few things to talk about. Um, Jeff, do you want to pull your microphone down? Because when it's up, it's right there. Perfect. OK. okay. Uh, speaking of the gym lockers, mm -hmm. I can assure you that that is a problem. Uh, I have, well, I, ha I had track after school, and I had to put my backpack um, either inside another small locker, which was kind of crammed, because I had to have all my textbooks in there, but uh, leaving it out. I know a friend uh, that got money stolen from his backpack, and that is also a problem. But yeah, and then school, uh, the seniors have graduated, so I congratulate them. But the school seems really dead without them. <laughs> like after every year, uh, like there's like a climax graduation, and then it just like plummets to the ground. <laughs> and I feel like there's like a negative attitude. I mean, not like towards school in general, like not doing uh, work and just forgetting what your teacher says. And I feel like that's an issue, but I guess that's gonna happen anyway since it's the end of the school year. Uh, the auto shop is looking for uh, used cars for donations. And, uh, <laughs> nah. okay. And then last time uh, we talked about the block schedule and a lot of the older um, classmates of mine said that they really liked the block schedule since they're used to it and wouldn't really want to see the change. But I'm guessing the younger students since they're uh, like already gradually like going to the eight classes a day with the language and math maybe uh, that they already have skinnies in with other classes that they would be more open to doing that. And today is uh, regionals for track, and I wish all of them luck if they actually did it. I don't know because of the rain, but yep. Hey, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Anita Jagosinski. Um, I wanted to say congratulations to the graduates. Um, Alex Acri gave a great graduation speech on Saturday, and so forever burned into my retinas is Alex drinking a Pepsi with cowboy boots on. <laughs> so if you missed that, um, it was quite a treat. It was really nice. He gave a very good speech, and it was a um, good ceremony. Um, also, just a plug for track sectionals, <coughs> which are here on Friday, and come to the concession stand because we spent a boatload of money at Sam's Club over the weekend and stocked <laughs> up the concession stand. So um, starts at 3.30. Come and cheer on the Vikings. Friday? And, um, Friday, yep. And we do need help in the concession stand too. Although my kids have been out of high school for over four years, I seem to be one of the only parents that will still help in the track concession stand. So <laughs> you track parents, you know, start pulling your weight out there. Come and help. <laughs> Anyhow, that's all I have. <coughs> okay, thank you. Um, Lisa Collins. Um, just one thing to add from our finance committee. Um, we met last week talking about the, the budget cycle coming up this, um, this year and how we have our audit that happens. Um, we have an independent auditor that comes in and um, you know assesses our uh, how we're doing basically in all the different areas and it was brought up in discussion that it might be beneficial to have the auditor actually provide the presentation versus it coming from, um, you know, Jay or, you know, the finance department here with the district. Um, I think the thinking was that the auditor was the one that actually went through the thorough analysis of each area, um, gives feedback. I, identifies concerns so who better to give that presentation and I think it also you know allows for more transparency um, from that independent auditor to give that give that um, report and of course Jay would be there you know, available to answer any specific questions um, are you talking about during the annual meeting yeah or? during okay. the annual meeting do you have to give them a time limit who a time limit? the auditor <laughs> I know, and this, Anita and Gary, you probably remember this, but once we had an auditor, it was almost 
uh, hour mm -hmm. of presentation and yeah we well yeah and I think um, we've had some discussion just back and forth emails and things and I think having a meeting with the auditor yeah. prior to let them know what you know kind of expect what the meeting looks like how long it is yeah I think sometimes <coughs> when you um, you know have control of that microphone but when you give up that microphone you know the, right. or the presentation it can you it's hard to get it back so we well, just have to do that if you we talked about having maybe a co-presentation even sure possibly with with Jay and, and I, I'd be the treasurer and kind of doing my little spiel there too so um, it would be an additional cost to the district to have the auditors the agency present to us and I think they came back at a quote of $200 so if we think that's something that would be um, you know cost effective and for us then that's something we need to talk about I just wanted to present that Okay. Well, thank you. Um, then Tim Menninger. <coughs> um, actually, a few things this evening. Uh, first off, I want to kind of speak to the way we started the meeting tonight. You know, it's kind of been a Monday and a Tuesday all wrapped into one this week. Busy holiday weekend. It's been raining for, I don't know, three days in a row now. And then you walk in and the room is full and the Adaptive Sports League is here and it's just like a bright sunshine inside the building. It's just anybody who's you know paid attention, I have just always loved when we have groups come and present to us. And I thought, what a just a, a nice way to kind of re kind of uh, get your motivation again tonight is you know after that whole Monday, Tuesday day into one and, and the, the dreary weather. So uh, very, very excited the way we started the meeting with the Adaptive Group and thank you to them for coming as well. I thought it was wonderful. Um, also wanted to just make a, a couple of comments. Uh, Dr. Carlson had mentioned to uh, really pay attention to the ongoings at the state level. And uh, any, anybody who's, again, <coughs> watched me over the years knows I'm a big fan of process. Uh, the ends do not justify the means with me. And, uh, you know, I understand democracy. I understand that, uh, you know, they, they have the votes to pass it. But what is deeply concerning is the process in which they're doing it. Uh, late night, middle of the night, lack of discussion, lack of notice, lack of debate uh, is really troubling. And even if you agree with what they're doing, and I don't, uh, for the record, I don't agree with the funding and the voucher issues. Understanding that there are people who do, I don't know how you can agree with the methods of which they're doing it. And anytime you see methods like that, I immediately question what's the purpose, what are you either hiding, or what are you trying to get by with? And to me, that's the question that we need to ask when they do things at 1.30 in the morning with no notice and no advance and no discussion and no debate. It's what are we either trying to get by with or what are we hiding? And those are the questions I hope everybody asks, whether you agree or disagree with what they're trying to do. We have to ask why we're using that process because I think there's something more there. And the last thing, and I do this annually starting this time of year, usually starts post-graduation, but after tonight there are only four more board meetings before the fall sport starts. <laughs> okay. With that, those are my comments for the evening. Okay, Gary Dunlap. Well, you just wish the summer away, don't you? Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's how fast it goes. <laughs> yes, it does. Um, I'd like just to uh, see a few words at the custodial maintenance mechanic technology based wage negotiations. Negotiations have been completed and, and that will be brought before the board uh, very soon. Uh, congratulations to the Adaptive Sports League. Uh, I, like all the rest of us, are very proud of every single one of those athletes. And it, it just just warms the cockles of your heart to have them up here. And, and then I'd like to congratulate the uh, graduating seniors, and I wish them the best of luck. And, and I recommend they work very hard the next few years to, to get ahead of the game. And, and of course, uh, be safe. Thank you. And I... Um, Two had an opportunity, and I say this every year, to participate in graduation and to shake the hands of all 264 or 54, depending on, and you know whether they are sweaty or cold or hot or a tight <laughs> grip or kind of a not not so good handshake. The <laughs> smile on their face is just worth it to me. Every, each and every one, all the work that we do, because I've said this before. 
they all come across that stage with a big smile, whether some are shy, some, but they have that look in their eye of accomplishment, whether they are the valedictorian or number 264 in their class, they all accomplish something and they are proud of that and I'm so proud of them and, and thankful for all of our staff that help them along the way and we talk about that, whether it's the transportation that gets them to school safely, um, the custodial staff who keep a nice environment for them to learn in, food service who provide them with a good breakfast and lunch um, to be ready to learn, the staff in the classroom, whether whether it's an educator, an education assistant, um, our administration, everybody just really had something to do, a little something to do with that accomplishment. And I thank you and I wish you all had that opportunity um, to do that. So again, it was just a, a great weekend and um, I always enjoy that the most of anything. I said it's my payoff to for all the work that we do is to be able to shake their hands. So I'm so appreciative of that. And then one last chance for board members. I know that I've received a couple um, comments from people that they just want to stay on the same committees, but we will be in, in June. I haven't heard from you yet. I, I'll be assigning you the same committee unless I hear something different in the next few weeks or a couple days um, here so that we can get that out for the end of June. So that's all I have. Then I would just note um, you received written copies of the board, uh, building and grounds, finance committees and personnel and governance. May 28th um, is the retiree, retiree reception at 3.30 at the district office here. The annual meeting for CESA is June 3rd. We have board meetings on June 8th and 22nd. Um, any comments about the board meeting this evening? Seeing none, then um, Anita, would you read the um, yep. executive session motion, please? I would make a motion to go into executive session uh, as per Wisconsin statute 19.851C for the purpose of considering employment. Promotion, compensation, or performance evaluation data of any public employee over which a governmental body has jurisdiction or exercises responsibility. In this case, deliberating upcoming collective bargaining over total base wages for affected professional and non professional staff members. Is there a second? Second. And then, Christina, if you would do the roll call, please. Tom Cruise? Yes. Carol Hancock? Yes. Anita Jagosinski? Yes. Kate Mayer is excused. Lisa Collins? Yes. Tim Mettinger? Yes. And Gary Dunlap? Yes. Okay, we will reconvene in about four minutes. Four minutes. Because it will be really five. So. Oh.